In the bustling city of Hartsville, in the shadow of skyscrapers and amidst the clamor of city life, lived Alexander, a wealthy businessman known for his charisma and success. Though his family's wealth gave him access to society's elite, he found himself captivated by Clara, a simple, down-to-earth woman who worked in a small bookstore. One day, as he visited Clara's bookstore, their connection deepened. Alexander. Clara, this place is like a haven. How do you find the right book for everyone who walks in? Clara. Oh, Alexander, it's all about listening and connecting with people. Something tells me you're quite good at that yourself. Alexander. Blushing, perhaps. But I must admit, I feel more genuine joy here than at any high society gathering. Weeks turned into months and their love blossomed. They spent countless hours talking, reading together, and discovering shared dreams. However, not everyone approved of their relationship. Lady Catherine, frustrated, Alexander, what are you doing with this, this common girl, she's clearly beneath you. Alexander, calmly, mother, she's anything but common. Clara is genuine, loving, and understands me. Isn't that what matters? Lady Catherine, sternly, no, what matters is family reputation, status, and tradition. Mark my words, this will not end well. Despite his mother's objections, Alexander's love for Clara only grew stronger. He proposed, and they were soon married in a small, intimate ceremony. Clara. Tears in her eyes, Alexander, are you sure about this? I don't want to cause trouble between you and your family. Alexander. Sincere. Clara, I love you more than anything in this world. Nothing else matters. We'll face everything together. Clara, smiling, then I'm yours forever and always. The first chapter of their life together closed with a kiss and the promise of shared dreams. Despite Lady Caverin's cold disapproval, their love was genuine and they were committed to building a life together. Two blissful years had passed since Alexander and Clara's wedding, filled with laughter, shared dreams, and the joys of married life. But fate had other plans. One rainy night, Alexander's car skidded on the slick streets, leading to a devastating accident that cost him his sight. The news reached Clara and Lady Catherine simultaneously. Lady Catherine, panicked, Clara, tell me it's not true. Tell me Alexander is all right. Clara, calmly, he's alive, but he's lost his sight. The doctors say there's nothing they can do. Lady Catherine, in tears, my son, my poor son, and you stand there so calm, don't you care for him at all? Clara, defensively, of course I care, but panicking won't help him now. Clara's lack of visible emotion did not go unnoticed by Lady Catherine, who found her demeanor strange. At the hospital, Alexander woke up to darkness, his world forever changed. The gravity of the situation was slowly sinking in. Alexander, frightened, Clara, are you there? I can't see anything, I can't see you. Clara, forcing sadness, I'm here, Alexander. The doctors say, say you've lost your sight. But we'll get through this together. Alexander. Weakly. As long as you're with me, I know we can face anything. Clara. Uncomfortably. Yes, of course, we will. Days turned into weeks, and Alexander's recovery was slow and painful. Clara's indifference became more apparent, even though she tried to mask it with a facade of support and love. Alexander. Struggling. Clara. I feel like I'm a burden to you. You don't have to stay with me. Clara. Quickly, don't be silly. I'm your wife and I'll stand by you. Alexander. Softly. But I can hear it in your voice, Clara. Something's changed. Clara. Dismissively, nothing's changed. You're just imagining things. Lady Catherine, too, began to notice the cracks in Clara's facade, her coldness towards her son. Lady Catherine. Accusingly. Clara, do you love my son? Truly love him. Clara, defensively, how dare you question my love? I'm doing everything I can for him. Lady Catherine, coldly, perhaps, but I see something in your eyes, something that makes me doubt. As the days wore on, Alexander's trust in Clara remained unshaken, but others around him saw what he could not. A cloud had settled over their once happy home, and the doubts and fears it brought were growing darker by the day. The terrible accident had not only stolen Alexander's sight, but had also revealed a side of Clara that was previously hidden. Lady Catherine's reservations had found a basis, and though she said nothing more to her son, her eyes were wide open, watching Clara's every move. In the midst of the bustling city in their quiet home, 
the seeds of betrayal were sprouting and a storm was gathering. A love that had once seemed unbreakable was beginning to show cracks, and the trust that had been their foundation was slowly eroding. What lay ahead was uncertain, but it was clear that their lives had changed forever, and the path they were on was fraught with danger and deceit. Weeks had turned into months, and Alexander's once vibrant life had dimmed into a world of darkness and uncertainty. However, in the midst of the gloom, a glimmer of hope emerged. Dr. Simmons, optimistic, Alexander, there's a new surgical procedure that might help you regain your sight. It's delicate and still experimental, but I believe it's worth a try. Alexander, excitedly, really, doctor? Is there truly a chance I might see again? Dr. Simmons, cautiously, there's hope, but I must warn you, the waiting period is extensive and there are no guarantees. Alexander, determined, I'll take that chance. Anything to see Clara's face again. Dr. Simmons, very well, we'll begin the preparations. Alexander couldn't wait to share the news with Clara. Alexander, joyfully, Clara, there's hope. The doctor said I might see again. Clara, unenthusiastically, that's wonderful, dear. Alexander, confused, you don't sound happy. Is something wrong? Clara, hastily, no, no, I'm thrilled. It's just, well, it's a long waiting period and it might not even work. Alexander, softly, I know, but it's a chance and I have to take it. Their relationship continued, but the distance between them seemed to grow. Clara's lack of enthusiasm for Alexander's potential recovery did not go unnoticed by him. Alexander, troubled, Clara, you seem distant lately, is everything all right? Clara, annoyed, everything's fine, Alexander, stop worrying. Alexander, hurt, but I can feel something's changed between us. Are you sure there's nothing wrong? Clara, frustrated, I said I'm fine. Just focus on your recovery. Lady Catherine's suspicion of Clara grew as well. Lady Catherine, suspicious, Alexander, I know you trust Clara, but there's something not quite right about her lately. Alexander, defensively, mother, please don't start this again. Clara's been nothing but supportive. Lady Catherine, softly, I know, I know. I just want what's best for you, my dear boy. During the waiting period, Alexander's longing for his previous life became more acute. He found himself reminiscing about the times before the accident. Alexander, reflectively, I miss seeing the sunrise, Clara. I miss your smile, the way your eyes light up when you laugh. I feel like I've lost a part of myself. Clara, impatiently, you'll get used to it, Alexander. Life moves on. Alexander, disheartened, but I don't want to get used to it. I want my life back, and I want you to be a part of it as you were before. Clara, avoiding, and we will, in time, just be patient. The more Alexander hoped and dreamed of regaining his sight, the more Clara's indifference became apparent. The surgery was a beacon of hope for Alexander, but it seemed to be a point of contention for Clara. In the midst of his physical and emotional recovery, doubts began to plague Alexander's mind. Clara's lack of enthusiasm, her dismissive comments, and the growing distance between them weighed heavily on his heart. The glimmer of hope that had briefly lit up his world was now tinged with uncertainty. The waiting period was not just a test of his physical endurance, but a trial of his trust and love. Something was amiss, and the shadows of doubt were growing longer and darker, threatening to overshadow the delicate hope that had ignited in his heart. The days grew longer for Alexander as he awaited the delicate surgery that could restore his sight. His world had already been turned upside down by his blindness, but stranger still were the occurrences that began to haunt his daily life. One evening, while Clara was in another room, he heard something unusual. Alexander. Alarmed, Clara, is there someone else here? Clara. Calmly, no dear, it's just the delivery man. He brought the package I ordered. Alexander, suspiciously. I heard someone's breath, and it wasn't yours. It sounded different. Clara. Dismissively, you must be mistaken, darling. It's just your imagination playing tricks on you. Alexander, uneasily, maybe you're right. But as the days wore on, the mysterious happenings continued. Alexander would smell an unfamiliar perfume lingering in the air, hear a soft laughter that wasn't Clara's, or sense a presence that just didn't seem right. Alexander, disturbed, Clara, I've been smelling a strange perfume lately. It's not yours, is it? Clara, Annoyed. Why would you even ask that? 
You know my sense. It's probably just something from outside. Alexander. Frustrated. No, Clara. This is different. It's inside our house, and it's unfamiliar. Clara. Irritated. You're just being paranoid, Alexander. It's nothing. Alexander. Hurt. I'm not paranoid. I know what I sensed. Please, don't dismiss my feelings. Clara. Sighs. All right, I'm sorry. It's just, I think you're overthinking things. One night, as Alexander lay awake, he heard the soft murmur of voices. Unable to shake the feeling that something was off, he confronted Clara the next morning. Alexander. Serious. Clara, I heard voices last night. It wasn't a dream. Someone was here. Clara. Frustrated. Enough, Alexander. It was the TV. I fell asleep watching a late-night show. Alexander. Determined? No, Clara. This was different. It was real, and it was close. Please, don't lie to me. Clara. Defensively. I'm not lying. You're letting your imagination get the best of you. There's no one here but us. Despite Claire's dismissals, Alexander's trust began to waver. Yet, he held firm to his belief in Clara, unwilling to think she would betray him. Alexander, softly, Clara, I trust you. I love you. But something isn't right, and I need to know what it is. Clara, tenderly, I love you too, Alexander. But there's nothing wrong. Please trust me. But the mysterious happenings didn't stop. Unfamiliar sounds, strange scents, and a persistent feeling of unease continued to gnaw at Alexander's heart. Lady Catherine, concerned. Alexander, my dear boy, is everything all right? You seem troubled. Alexander? Tiredly, I don't know, mother. Strange things have been happening, and Clara's acting differently. Lady Catherine, gently, have you considered talking to her openly about your feelings? Alexander, resigned, I have, but she dismisses my concerns. As the days turned into weeks, the mysteries grew, and so did Alexander's doubts. A seed of uncertainty had been planted, and it began to take root, threatening to crack the solid foundation of trust that had once been unshakable. The love that had blossomed between two unlikely people was now being tested by something hidden in the shadows, something neither of them could quite grasp. The truth remained elusive, and the fear of betrayal began to creep into Alexander's heart. The shadows of doubt continued to loom over Alexander, and it became increasingly difficult to keep his concerns to himself. He needed someone to confide in, someone who might understand his fears. It was with a heavy heart that he turned to his mother, Lady Catherine, for counsel. Alexander, troubled. Mother, something's been happening that I can't quite explain. I tried talking to Clara, but she dismisses it all. I hear strange voices, unfamiliar scents linger in our home, and Clara, she's changed. Lady Catherine, concerned. My dear boy, these are grave matters indeed. You must be careful. Perhaps, perhaps Clara is not being truthful with you. Alexander, defensively, Mother, don't say that. Clara loves me, and I love her. I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation. Lady Catherine, gently, I know how much you care for her, Alexander, but remember, love can blind us to the truth. Have you considered that she might be cheating on you? Alexander, shocked, what? No, Clara would never do that. I trust her. Lady Catherine, softly, I hope you're right, Alexander. But these signs, these changes in behavior, they are often indicators of betrayal. You must be cautious. Seek proof before confronting her. Protect yourself, my son. Alexander. Torn. I, I don't know what to do, mother. I want to believe her, but I can't shake the feeling that something is wrong. Lady Catherine, embracing him. Trust your instincts, Alexander. They're there to guide you. I only want you to be safe and happy. As the time for his surgery approached, Alexander was filled with a mix of hope and dread. The hope of regaining his sight was overshadowed by the fear of discovering a painful truth. Alexander, nervously, Clara, the time for my operation has come. I will be traveling with a friend to have it done. Clara, cheerfully, that's wonderful, Alexander. I'm so happy for you. Alexander, hesitant, I, I don't want to burden you, so I've decided to go without you. Clara, surprised, Oh, are you sure? I can come with you. Alexander. Firmly, no, Clara, stay here. I need to do this on my own. Clara. Slightly disappointed. All right, if that's what you want. 
I'll be here waiting for you. Alexander. Softly. Thank you, Clara. I love you. Clara. Kissing him. I love you too. Take care of yourself. With a heavy heart, Alexander departed for the operation, torn between the desire to see again and the fear of what he might discover. The seeds of doubt planted by his mother were growing, and the love that had once been so strong was now shouted by suspicion. His mother's words echoed in his mind. Seek proof. Protect yourself. But how could he? How could he doubt the woman he loved? How could he suspect her of betrayal? As he traveled, his thoughts were a whirlwind of confusion and despair. The operation that should have been a joyous occasion was now tainted with uncertainty. The time had come to face his fears, to confront the truth, and to discover what lay hidden behind the mysterious happenings in his home. It was a journey filled with trepidation, a path that could lead to healing or heartbreak. But whatever awaited him, Alexander knew that he had to face it. The truth, no matter how painful, was better than living in the shadow of doubt. The operation was a delicate one, fraught with uncertainty, but it was a success. Alexander's vision was restored. But rather than elation, a chilling dread filled his heart. He knew that he had to return home to confront the mystery that had haunted him to face the truth. Surgeon, congratulations, Mr. Alexander, the surgery was a success. You'll see the world again. Alexander, muted, thank you, doctor. It means more than you can know. Surgeon, you seem troubled. Is there something wrong? Alexander, fighting back tears. I have to go home and face something I'm afraid of, but I'm ready now. Thank you. With a heavy heart, Alexander returned home, choosing not to tell Clara about his restored sight. He wanted to see for himself what was really happening. Clara, unaware, Alexander, welcome home. How are you feeling? How did the surgery go? Alexander, pretending. The surgery was unsuccessful. Clara, I'm afraid I'll never see again. Clara, feigning sadness. Oh, Alexander, I'm so sorry. I'm here for you. Let's make the best of this together. That night, as Alexander pretended to sleep, he heard a soft creaking of the door and a gentle whisper. Opening his eyes, he saw Clara with another man. His heart stopped, the pain overwhelming. Alexander. In disbelief. Clara? What is this? How could you? Clara. Terrified. Alexander. You can see. I. I can explain. Alexander. Angry and heartbroken. Explain. How can you explain betrayal? I trusted you. Clara's lover. I'm sorry, man. I didn't know. Alexander. Furious. Get out. Both of you. I never want to see you again, Clara. The divorce was quick, the pain raw and unending. Clara's pleas fell on deaf ears. Alexander's trust was shattered, his love turned to dust. Alexander. To his lawyer. I want this to be over. I want to forget her. Lawyer. It's done, Alexander. You're free now. But freedom felt like a hollow victory. Alexander went to his mother, who had always suspected the truth. Lady Catherine, embracing him, My dear boy, I'm so glad you can see again, and I'm sorry about Clara, but you're better off without her. Alexander, tears in his eyes, I loved her, mother. How could she do this to me? Lady Catherine, People can be deceitful, my son. Trust must be earned, not given freely. You will heal, and you will find someone worthy of your love. Alexander, I hope so, mother. I hope so. The story concludes with Alexander's painful reflection on trust, love, and betrayal. The joy of regaining his sight was overshadowed by the devastating realization that the woman he loved had been unfaithful. The lesson was a bitter one. That trust, once broken, is almost impossible to rebuild. That love, no matter how deep, can be shattered by deceit. The memory of Clara's betrayal would linger, a haunting reminder of the fragility of trust and the caution needed in love. In the end, Alexander's journey was not just about regaining his sight, but about seeing the painful truth. The betrayal was a scar on his soul, a wound that would take time to heal. But with the support of his mother and the strength of his own character, he knew that he would find a way to love again, to trust again, and to live again. It was a painful lesson, but a necessary one, a reminder that trust is the foundation of any relationship, and without it, even the deepest love can crumble.